Welcome back, guys, to a to a new video or new playlist uh, for the con uh, for the, the the channel, which is VED. You might remember this this game uh, that I've posted a demo on the demo playlist or the demo showcase uh, showcase playlist. You can check it out if you want. Uh, first of all, thanks for thanks to Fulcrum Publishing for giving me, me giving me the the a review key for the game. Uh, I'm playing on PS5, so I have the game for the PS4 and PS5. I played this game on the PC on, on Steam, <coughs> the demo, and they were kind enough to give me the the key for the PS5 and PS4. So let's start the game. Prologue, purification. Yeah, let's go. I really enjoyed the demo, so let's give it a try and play the game. I got curious about what, what was gonna happen. Prologue, purification, purification. Game automatically saves after. Okay, whatever. Micropolis. 43 Stone Mason. I have no Street. time to falter. They're coming for me. But I need to weigh all pros and cons once more. Am I ready to start anew in the world of magic? Forgetting my Vedic duty, destiny, and friends? Brother, how could you have betrayed us? The Codex commands us not to interfere in the affairs of the magic world. Uh, the world of magic is superior. We are all one. Lie. Let's go with X. This world trumps ours. Traitor. Nothing but oblivion awaits you. Okay, so... Dexterity 5, magic 5, strength 5. Grab the sword. It requires a dexterity of 15. Oh, I don't have nothing. Uh, leap out of the chair. Strike with lightning. Now let's try the square. Success. Woo! I'm fast. I went to rip. Okay, let's uh, try triangle now. Success. And let's go with a grab the sword. I think I'm not gonna make that one. Oh, success. All right. Let's go with magic. Ah, failure. Ah. Roll under the table and strike with the sword. Let's teleport. Oh, that's gonna require a lot of magic. Let's, let's go with square. Done. And teleport. Woo! Victory! Story battles. The key action is... Alright, nice. Sanctuary One of the zero Ancients. In favor of the Hatter. Hmm, let's go left. Explore. Ooh, the gnome statue carved out of dark stone has long become <clears throat> uh, covered with cracks and coated with ice but it still safeguards the bridge by looming over lo, over it menacingly huh? menacingly whatever for success for success the random number of the d20 guild plus your trait must be at least a difficulty value 
let's inspect them. Oh, nice. Okay, let's uh, repair. Try at least. Weakness. All of health and shield. Ah, thank you, fucking sh statue. Alright, let's do our first battle. Got you. It's, let's see if I can remember that. To the left or not no, let's go with square place in either of the two worlds but that's no good you mustn't throw your life away for my sake this won't solve anything what about the chains of the titans binding the mask of the faceless did you manage to destroy their magic no it didn't work this magic is beyond the likes of me spirits are helpless against the magic of the giants all of our efforts were in vain exactly it's a job for a human. Don't worry, my little Daisy. I'm friends with a sorceress from the human world. She'll help us. She'll cast spells on my sword, so I can crush the chains. Then we'll get our hands on the mask, too. To be together? No. I'd rather be alone and, and know that you're somewhere safe and sound than watch you suffer. You betray your order and give up mankind, and then we use an artifact steeped in black magic. That's too high a price to pay for love. But I'm ready to pay it. Get out! I don't need your sacrifice. Alright. Let's see. Titan chains. And teleport. Demonic seal. Let's go with the Titan ch chains. Chop it up. Without a fiery sword, you can as much as scratch these chains. Mmm, so let's fight. We're in. Round one. Uh, restores between 11 and 46 health points. Okay. It's gonna miss probably. Chains again. Without a fiery sword, oh, yeah. 
You can something. as much as scratch these chains. Meeting with friend. Let's go meet with a friend. Hey, friend. City bar. And here comes Tim. Unapologetically late as always. Hi, Tim. Duck, you stubborn jackass! Give up your plan before it's too late! No. My mind's made up. You're about to throw your whole life away. Give up your creed, betray the Brotherhood. And all for what? For some fey princess from Magic World. T why? I'll put you in touch with dozens of beauties right here. And given your Vedic mission, any young lady out there can be yours. Mm. You see, I don't need dozens of beauties. I need just the one. All right, all right. Your hormones have evidently fried your brain and you can't get through the day without her. You don't need to dive into this dangerous and uncharted world. What if she's just using you? Have you thought of that? Do you have any idea what this mask is? And why it's sealed? No, you don't. And what is she exactly? The Supreme Spirit? You don't need this. You're a Ved. Your life's purpose is to fight against magic, to strike a balance. Mm. Equanimity within one's understanding. Enough. This was a stupid idea. This conversation's going nowhere. You're misguided, Duke. Please, think about your decision one more time. Come on over, we'll have some tea and talk. Maybe I'll be able to talk you out of it. Don't expect to change my mind, but I'll be happy to come over and have a cup of tea with you one last time. On the one hand, I can understand you. Magic, a new world, fresh emotions, a new woman. It's all very exciting. Still, I doubt you'll ever come back. The Veds will banish you. <laughs> Here's your tea. Let's warm up from the stroll. Tim, you're just much too young to give up all the delights of civilization. All right then, let's imagine that you'll stay there. What then? What would you do? Give it a few years and you'll be sick and tired of this magic, with no way to get back. You're a human, and belong in the world of people. You must be joking. Tim, where did you pick up such platitudes? It's a vast new world out there, and it works in a totally different way from ours. I'm sorry, Duke. I'm looking out for your own good. It's a grave error for you to leave the Veds. Stay, and they'll forgive you, and you'll- Sometime later, the Veds arrive to manacle the fugitive traitor. Tim is not too familiar with the Vedic laws, and couldn't have known that this would be the end of Duke. Any violation of the Vedic statute entails the same punishment, the purification rite in the sanctuary of the Vedic Brotherhood. The Grand Master's harsh sentence is the last thing that the convicted party would hear in his life. In the name of the eternal law of the boundary, you are banished from the Brotherhood for your devious violation of the statute, thus forfeiting your sword, strength, and memory from now on. You cease to be a Ved. This, however, doesn't end Duke T. Riggs' life. He leaves for his hometown, where he begins working as a miner. After an exhausting day at work, he frequents bars with his friends, and only late at night while staring into a flickering fireplace, he feels inexplicably lonely, as if something is missing from his mediocre existence. Chapter 1, Awakening Okay, there was two other options. Hmm. 30 years later. Ah, this is the character I played on the demo. He got younger? 24 Park Street, September 25, Wednesday, 
8.05 a.m. A student? No, not a student anymore. Rather, I'm on the verge of becoming a productive member of society. In of hearing, imaginative and quick study. Plus, I can be quite perceptive as a child. After an unsuccessful experiment with literacy, I partially lost my sight. But that's a mere a minor e issue, which doesn't prevent me from being a success. Oh, that's why he always... Oh, I thought there was a bug. Okay. Interesting. It's time to wake up before I doze till noon. Take out cheese pancakes, retrieve gold drumsticks, and grab both dishes. Oh yeah. What was I dreaming of? Rustling crimson leaves? Black ground? An azura sky? So very inviting. No, why now? Couldn't they have come ten minutes later? Who could it be? And Xena? Too early. And she always has her key with her. What a drag. Having to rush to the door to talk to some stranger. Okay, I must be at the door. Hey, what's taking so long? Are you in the shower? Hello, Mr... Cyrus, if you please. Cyrus? Yes, that's my name. But what about Mr... Fine, Mr. Cyrus. Is this a joke? What Mr. Cyrus? I need Mr. Timms. Mr. Timms, eh? Sounds vaguely familiar. So, he's not here? No, it's just me. You? Uh... Well, Aunt Zena, too. I'm staying with her for a bit. That's strange. I was told this was the residence of... Oh, now I remember. My aunt told me yesterday that Mr. Timms is our upstairs neighbor. An academician living right above us. That's a shame. Well, then... You have some business with the professor? I was just told to give him this book and pink lilies on the occasion of his recent birthday. If you like, I could pass him the presents as soon as he gets back. Oh, that would be great. Here you go. An encyclopedia and flowers. What about the flowers? The flowers? Oh, Mr. Timms returns in two weeks. Consider them a token of my gratitude for all your trouble. Your time and effort. Thanks. I adore lilies. It's such a blessing to have kind and selfless people such as yourself in the world. Don't mention it. Bye now. Take care. I should get back inside before the apartment gets too chilly. She sure has a beautiful voice. I wonder if we'll ever meet again. Unlikely. But what if I rush after her right now and say something? Why not? It may work. Okay, just gotta get up. I'll just run to the window, facing the road, and shout after her. Hey, hey, hey! Young lady who is here to see Mr. Timms, are you there? Running out there blindly won't work. I should have gotten her phone number and address. And now what do I have? Nothing but Mr. Tim's presence. Stop yelling, you imbecile! I'll yell all I want. Mind your own business. Imbecile. Who are you calling an imbecile? Me? That's right. Who else? Shut up, slug, before I smear you on the concrete. Who? You? Did you just hear yourself? Oh, you want to take it outside? Come on down. I always have a couple of minutes to school a scarecrow like you. Oh, shut up, both of you pipsqueaks. Raising ruckus here in broad daylight. Oh, go away. Why are you still standing there? Didn't you hear what I said? I see, I see. 
Look at that gutter rat tucking his tail and running off. What else can you expect from a whiny dipshit? You asshole. <laughs> You're dead meat, you hear? Now what? Ancina's definitely gonna notice. You little bastard! That's it! I'm going up there to school, you! Your ass is grass! What's with you youngsters these days? Buried in your computers, barely go outside. <sighs> when it comes to shooting your mouth off, you talk big. As soon as there's an issue, <sighs> you run for the hills. Why did I react to that provocation? I made a fool of myself. More importantly, what to do about the window now? We'll have to order a new one. Could ask the neighbors. No, not the neighbors. They'll tell Aunt Xena. Whose brilliant idea was it to stick my nose out of the window? How did that work out for you, you twit? Oh, he was triggered. Wouldn't you know it? Why not clinically depressed? Next time, use your brains, not your- Now we'll never hear her speak again. Not about her friends. Not about what makes her happy and sad. Who are you talking about? Still brooding about that cute stranger? I'll never touch her hand to see if it's warm or cool. I won't find out what she likes. Which croissant she likes best. Chocolate or butterscotch. Are you kidding? But why fret about it anyway? Even if you had her phone number, address, and name, it wouldn't change a thing. Cause look at yourself. What do you amount to now? A nobody. Some guy visiting from Kamara with a diploma in tow, and as of yet, unemployed. No income, no car, and let's face it, no friends. And completely lacking independence. First, get a job and earn your keep. And then you can dare to invite a girl out or give her flowers. Then you'll be someone she's not embarrassed to show to her parents. Those ubiquitous rooksters are always bugging me. Ah, pirate! Pirate! What do you want? Shoe. Cyrus! Cyrus! Hurry! We need your help! What the hell is that? Now and then, you'd hear a rookster say a word or two. Something that has picked up like a parrot. But never blabbing like this. There's a fire! Everything is burning! Cyrus, hi, hurry! To the rescue! Is someone in there? Yes! A stupid boy left the gas stove on! Okay... Call the fireman, losing precious time when every second may mean life or death. Take matters in your own ends and rush. Okay, let's go. The front door is locked. I'll try to get through the window. Cyrus, don't be stupid! You'll get both yourself and him killed! Leave this to the fireman! I can handle this myself! You're crazy! At least grab the metal beam directly overhead! Uh, let's go straight. Straight. Is that the kid? Yeah, yeah, take that. There, that'll teach you. Huh. I can almost smell them burning up in there. Up in smoke. Wait. <gasps> fire! Damn it, what the? Who's that guy? Whoa, hey, your coat's on fire. Wait, let me help. Grab the computer and let's get out of here. You want to risk your life for a heap of metal? Help me or get the hell out! Straight and to the right. Fine, but hurry up. Here, take this and come with me. Move it! What was that? Oh, no! This clunky cupboard's blocking the only exit, and the flames are about to get in. Hurry, to the bathroom, before it all burns down! The tiled walls and floor are fire-resistant. But a tiny vent does little to clear the clouds of pernicious smoke. You've never stared death in the face like this before. And you're hoping and praying for the firemen to come soon. Your body is going limp from the lack of oxygen. Knees buckling. Your consciousness plunges into the abyss, engulfed in darkness. It's all so vivid. 
As if this world is oh, look way at more that. real than the real one. I passed out and I wake up on the magic world. Wait, how did I end up here? There was a fire and the neighbor kid. I must have fainted. And now I'm back here in a technicolor dream. Uh, let's go to the right. A whisper is louder than screams. Oh yeah, now we reach the part of the demo where we get our sword and start fighting. No, don't give up. Remember, you're a warrior with an iron will, breaking down walls for a noble cause. Wait, wait. He's bound to come. He will come. Yes, you will see. Ah, if only he turned up now, I'd clamor with joy. At last, I've been waiting for you for ages, Cyrus from Kamara. Alas, he's not here. And who knows how many more years I'll have to wait before meeting him. Who are you? What are you doing in my head? I am Justice. I am the balance that wards off disasters. I am the spirit leading you into battle and on to victory. So which one are you? Balance or spirit? An artifact. Isn't it obvious? Very informative. What power? What energy? Wait. So you're Cyrus. Cyrus from Kamara. I'm he. So now what? Now! On to victories! Great feasts! Fate has finally brought us together! From now on, we're brothers! I am your conduit to beyond, and you're my guide through the human world! Cyrus from Kamara is a master for life, a custodian unto death. Alright. Finally reached the, the, the part where we played in the, the demo. Are you ready? Ready for what? For battle! <laughs> Haven't you fought in a war before? Yeah, sure. In a war for survival? Do playground tussles count? Hmm. Close enough. Is that sarcasm? Got any advice for me? Just hold on tight for now. And bit by bit, you'll get a hang of it. Only seven? God damn. This is gonna be a, a long fight. That's gonna miss. Oh, come on, man. Okay, I think I gotta t I gotta take his head out. If I do that, I win the, the match. Yes! There we go. Right in time. Happy to oblige. Wait, and where's the spirit? Usually, once the body is destroyed, the spirit should have remained here. But now it's nowhere to be found. As if you've absorbed its energy and set it free. No idea what you're talking about. I have to show you to my grandfather. Do you mind teleporting us out to that glowing twig? All right. Is that a man? A homunculus? No, Grandpa. He's a warrior, a wizard, a gatherer. Gathering energy? We should make sure. Anyway, welcome to dawn. By dawn, do you mean that glowing twig? That's no twig. 
It's a newly sprouting tree of life. See if you can channel some of your energy into constructing a building. It'll help our tree and you as well. All right, let's build something. Courage Square. The Tree of Life is a source of infinite energy. Even its fallen leaves emit light, illuminating our homes and sanctuaries. Mm hmm. Put new ability in a free slot. Let me put this as well in here. And why not here as well? And done for now. Well, this is all well and good. Trees, magic. But how do I get back home? Back to my world? Go to the Scarlet Groves. There you'll find the sapphire shards of the altars of the ancients. Their energy will suffice to carry you home. But remember this. Your true home is here. All right. So this is our first episode of Bad. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.